Hi everyone and thank you. Um, good morning, good evening or good afternoon, whatever you are in the world and welcome to Artificial Intelligence from uh, for Every Developer. I am John Paolo and uh, uh, the work I'm doing here at IBV, uh, it's a lot of work about emerging technologies and this involves artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is a field that since some years ago, it was uh, restricted to a boundaries of some uh, some uh, scientists. With the work Microsoft and other big companies and the involvement they are making in artificial intelligence, uh, it's now possible to get artificial intelligence and develop artificial intelligence. Every of us can develop artificial intelligence. So let's dig into the slide and let's start talking about this course because we have a lot to talk and not that much time. So uh, about this course, uh, when you, you, the takeaway you will get is to, you will understand at the end of the course, you will understand what artificial intelligence is so define it in the context of uh, science, what machine learning is, and also what deep learning is. The way you actually can uh, develop artificial intelligence, the way you can infuse artificial intelligence in your application to make them smart. We will, you will also understand the core concept of deep learning, some of the technology and some of the terminology and the algorithm. And we will also develop some cool stuff. So let's go ahead. Artificial intelligence is something that uh, it's, it's there since long time ago, since early 40s. In, uh, in 1959, uh, the concept of machine learning was, uh, was introduced for the first time. But what is literally changing the world is the terms of, is the introduction of deep learning. Deep learning was introduced before 2012, but actually the first time it was used uh, to train a computer to make a computer intelligence, it was 2012. In 2012, and this was reported in the major uh, journal uh, in the United States, uh, like War, New York Times, there was a group of scientists that was able to build a network of 60,000 computer process process processors with one billion connector and let it browse YouTube looking for cats. So the brain simulation, the brain simulation was exposed to something like 10 million randomly selected thumbnails from YouTube over the course of three days. And after being presented with a list of 20,000 different items, it begins, it begins to recognize cats using deep learning algorithm. This is, uh, this date is really important because, you know, it was 2012 and they had to make a network of 60,000 computers to make this happen. Why? 
This is all about computational power. And I want to make a note on this because this is this is something that maybe not not everyone realized, but it's something very important because let's say let's start from 1995. In 1995 we got 5 million transistor on a SIP and it was the population of New York City at that time. 1995, it was the launch of the first Intel Pentium with uh, Windows 95 was also launched and everything was changed the world. 2005, the number of transistors on a single SIP grew to 160 million. This is the population of the entire East Coast. And it was the era when the Pentium 4 was coming out, internet uh, was growing, and uh, there was the, the mobile thing was near the corner. 2010, we got 1 billion transistor, and this is the post iPhone, post iPad uh, connected world, and we were doing gesture and voice recognition in our living room with 100, 150 bucks. 2015, we got 7.5 billion transistor on a chip, and that's a and that's a transistor for every single man, woman, and child on Earth. How big it is? How big this growing is going on? Two years later, 2017, we filled up another planet. It took 30 years to fill up to New York City and uh, just 10 years to fill up the entire world. That's the computer power, the compute power that is changing. The phase, how we will see the world in the next couple of years. And that's why now is the right moment to jump in in the artificial intelligence field and uh, uh, start developing for, for it. So, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is a branch of uh, science and uh, it's the science of making things smart. It can be defined as human intelligence exhibited by machine. And this is, this is in general uh, artificial intelligence. The state of the art, what we can do today with artificial intelligence Artificial intelligence today is like something, uh, don't, don't you think to the artificial intelligence of Terminator? We are not there. We won't be there. Artificial intelligence today is a form of narrow AI. A system can do just one or few defined things as well or as better than a human. And this is important. So. It can recognize something uh, or maybe detect a credit card fraud in, uh, in real time. There are several use cases in artificial intelligence like object recognition, speech, creative like style transfer as you see in this picture on the left, the original picture, in the middle the style that will be transferred to the original picture and on the right you will see the the result. How cool is this? So, uh, but in common, we can say today that you can infuse any of your application, any of your services, any of your website with artificial intelligence to make it become smart. Let's talk about, we, we define the artificial intelligence, let's talk about machine learning. Machine learning can be defined as an approach to achieve artificial intelligence through systems that can get better the more you run them. But, uh, machine learning involves teaching a computer to recognize patterns by ensemble, rather, rather than uh, programming it with, uh, with specific rules that we like we are uh, usual for doing it, if then else. No. Machine learning is something different, so we will teach it to recognize a pattern. And this pattern can be found within data, within data. 
and uh, it, it basically is creating algorithm that can uh, learn complex function from data and make prediction of uh, out of them. So, as we as we said, machine learning is predicting stuff, and it's intelligent because it takes some data to train the system, learns pattern from this data, and then classifies classifies new data it has never seen before. Uh, it, the, this data are classified the way that uh, the result is given out like, is given us like a best uh, guess of probability. So the difference between uh, traditional programming, if we can uh, take an example, maybe from a spam filter, and uh, if you were asked to develop a spam filter today with classical uh, development, let's say C sharp development, what what you are going to do? You are making a lost, long list of uh, uh, if and then, so a long list of rules. With machine learning, we can train. Uh, a computer assistant to classify some email and then this system is uh, is able once it's trained with a lot of data is able to apply the learning model and classify the the email in this case deep learning uh, can be generally defined as a technique of implementing machine learning one such technique is a concept known as deep neural network. Let's say uh, deep learning is the context of deep neural net, and deep neural network is where uh, our code, our artificial intelligence code, uh, is uh, is written on. So the ways of uh, developing artificial intelligence, we have several ways. Actually, three ways of developing artificial intelligence. The first one, the easy way, using artificial intelligence as a service. So by using our the Azure Cognitive Services and using it as a as a as a service, we have a bunch of uh, services covering a lots of um, domains like vision, speech, language, knowledge, uh, search, so far so on. To use it, it's very simple. Uh, I'm covering really, really fast this this part because this is not the core of our course today. By the way, just to give you a glimpse, and you can find a lot of uh, course also on uh, Channel Nine how to how to use uh, cognitive services. Basically. <coughs> We said that it's just using a service, so we just need to uh, invoke our uh, our services. In this case, it's, uh, the sample is a sentiment analysis. Uh, set some parameter, our subscription, our Azure subscription key, and then uh, send the send the request to the to the service, and we will get a result. Uh, nothing more simple than uh, nothing more simple than this. Second way, still easy, but some uh, more work. Another that built 2018, we have custom uh, cognitive services. This means that we are given the ability to customize general uh, services to our specific domain. What that, does this mean? For example, for vision, we can uh, we can take uh, we can take uh, some set of our pictures so that then it can recognize me, my colleagues, my family. So it's customization uh, service. How to do that? It's really simple. Just go to the uh, custom vision AI site, create a new project. If you want, if you want to, if we want to make the classification, then the project type should be classification, classification type, multi-class, because we are we want to classify several different domains, different elements, and if we choose as domain uh, any any that is compact, we can then export it uh, to a lot of uh, to a lot of stuff that I will show you later on. So, once we have created the, the project, just drop your figures. In this case, they are just some fishes, some uh, uh, flowers, and some uh, sticky figures. 
Let's train our model, we get the result. If we are happy with the result of the precision of the trained machine learning, we, can, uh, we are good to go and we can export, as I told before, uh, we made that compact and, uh, in the project and then we can export it to ONNX. What does it mean? It means that then we can use it for example, in our uh, uh, UVP application. And to use it, again, it's very simple, just download the model, put it in our, put it in our uh, project, and the project will automatically generate all the class and code needed to invoke, uh, to invoke the, the ONNX model. So we have just to load the model, and then in this case, it was just for recognizing the shapes. So it's like we are reading, we are uh, reading with the pen uh, on the ink canvas uh, a shape, and then it gets recognized. To recognize it, just some lines of code to get the to get the stroke collected from the ink canvas. Inker is just of type ink canvas. Sorry. And then transform it the way that the model can evaluate it and get the result. Okay, how how is possible that we can run uh, artificial intelligence actually in our uh, in our client, whatever it can be, it can be a server, it can be our Xamarin, it can be our uh, our UVP application, thanks to Windows ML. Windows ML is another uh, piece of technology uh, developed by Microsoft that helps us using artificial intelligence without the need of dig, do, going deep in artificial in the core stuff. Uh, for example, uh, uh, with the artificial intelligence, uh, we can focus on our uh, on our domain. So, and uh, what this means, that we can use our model without thinking how to make it works. To make it works, it should, uh, the, the, the model, when it uh, gets up, uh, when it is, it is asked for a prediction, uh, it can be that it, it has to run against the CPU or against the GPU. With WinML, all this stuff are done uh, under the hood. We don't have to care about it. We have just to get our model, and there are also a lots of already trained model that you can find online. Uh, at the end of the course, I have a slide with all the links that uh, I collected uh, during these years that you can uh, you can uh, get and uh, use it. So there are also a list of a lots of already trained model that you that you can use. So as as, as I say, uh, also the all the things related to the hardware, we don't have to care about it. Everything is uh, carried by Windows ML. So that's kudos to Microsoft also for this great piece of technology that we can use. If you want to get started with all NNX, just go to the site and uh, go to see the getting started in the tutorials because one of the other important feature of Onyx that you can uh, experience is that uh, around the world, if you look for models or uh, machine learning deep neural network uh, models or how to develop it, usually they are developed with uh, several different frameworks like uh, TensorFlow, Coffee, or something else. With Onyx, with the project Onyx, we, there is also the way for exporting uh, project from made with other uh, SDKs to Onyx, and then you can run it on your systems. So, uh, if you want to get a Zoom, uh, if you want to get uh, this, you can also train your data on the cloud. You can also use um, ML tools with ML tools, and as I said, you already the custom vision uh, AI side. Okay, and these are the, the first two ways of using AI, but we are not really developing AI, we are just using it. And uh, so, if you want to dig deeper and uh, get our hands dirty and write our uh, artificial intelligence code, 
we have to go to some process. First of all, we have to understand the core concepts, terminology and algorithm of uh, artificial intelligence so that then we can uh, develop our first uh, deep learning application. So, again, which is the uh, the way to develop an artificial intelligence. We need a set of data, actually we need a lot of data to build and train the model and then we can uh, we can deploy it, uh, we can use it, we can use it and we can deploy it also with ONNX. Let's go a step back to build the model and to train it before some months ago, before WinML, before uh, ML.net was uh, was uh, developed, was released, before the Visual Studio uh, Tools for AI was released. Uh, as a .NET developer, the way to develop artificial intelligence is it was to go totally out of our comfort zone. We need to use Python, we need to use tools that we are not used to. Thanks to the MI tools, to the AI tools for Visual Studio, we are able to run and build artificial intelligence using the toolset, using Visual Studio actually, the toolset, and there is also an AI tools for Visual Studio Code. So using the tools that we can, uh, that we are usual to use nowadays, every day, as .NET developer. Then, to train the model, we can use our local hardware, or we can train it on some uh, custom uh, uh, dedicated uh, virtual machine on Azure, with a lot of uh, computational power related to AI, so that means lots of GPU, GPU power. So, let, let's get a step back. Prepare the data. What, what this means, prepare the data? Prepare the data, it means first to identify the attrib attributes of the things you are trying to classify. If I'm trying to classify fruit, maybe the features, the attributes that I need are color and weight. Dimension usually refers to the number of attributes. So in the case of color and weight, we have we have an attribute with two dimension. So a feature or an attribute is one particular type of data that uh, generally is called data points. It's it's uh, so one data point identify one uh, one uh, object in this case uh, a fruit and. Uh, it contains many different attributes, and usually the attributes they they are a lot. Once you know feature to use, then the challenge is to find enough data to train the model. Imagine you need to recognize cut. You may need 10k sample image for cuts if you get, want to get a good result. So. Uh, regarding data, depending on uh, the problem you are trying to solve uh, while you are trying to infuse AI, data can be anything. Can be database rows, can be sun sample, can be video sample, can be images, can be tests, anything you need. Now there is some important to, to say. The data challenge and to find the right data for uh, solving your problem is important when you are actually developing your, when you are actually trying to solve your problem. If you want to learn artificial intelligence, you don't have to care at all about it because there are a lot of already uh, pre-made data sets around. And uh, again, in the last one of the last slides I have, there is a lot of links and there is covering also this part, how to get data so that you can uh, start learning artificial intelligence. But uh, uh, anyways, that is uh, really important when you are then going into production, developing your really, solving your really problem. So, uh, one, one, one other important thing to do, and this is related also to the amount of data, is that uh, machine, learning, machine learning cannot predict stuff it doesn't know about. What does it mean? Let's imagine we want to classify animals 
and we will uh, train our uh, system with um, just two data points. Uh, one data point uh, with attributes uh, name, number of legs, score and weight. So the two data points that we are going to train is just dog, four legs, color black, 10 kilos, and chicken, two legs, orange, five kilos. Now, if we train the model just with two, these two data, and then we ask the model for uh, to evaluate a cow with four legs, color black, and 200 kilos, I believe that the model will predict dogs, because it only knows about dogs and in kitchen, so in chicken. So this is the best guess. There is a there is a there is a nice sample that sample that uh, one of my fellow friend from the IA team was telling me, and she has a daughter, and they were usual with dog because they have a dog at home. Then they moved to Seattle. He was joining Microsoft, and there was a lots of horses around. And her daughter come to him and say, hey, hey, daddy, daddy, here there are some big dogs. <laughs> that's, that's funny because she never saw an horse. So the father has to tell her, no, darling, this is not a dog. This is an horse. So that then the brain is trained and he also understand how to recognize and differentiate dogs from horses. So, there are several ways to train a model. Usually, they are divided in uh, supervised learning and supervised learning, supervised and unsupervised learning. Supervised learning and when the uh, machine learning is trained with data and those data are labeled. What this means, labeled? In our case, when, when we want to classify uh, animals, the label will be the, the race of the animal, so dog, chicken, uh, cow, etc. And then uh, we give three inputs that are number of legs, color and weight. We are telling the system what out label we do expect. Uh, we use ML in this data to predict future unseen data. So what it means, it means that we can, uh, we, we have a boundary, we can represent, if we can represent it in a two axis dimension, we will have a boundary, and the boundary can be a straight line, a curve, or whatever, a function, let's say, and uh, if the label is dog, it should be a circle, if the label is uh, chicken, it can be red crosses, or we can have a lot of more uh, domains. So, we were saying label data, and then we have unsupervised learning. Unsupervised learning uh, is where, when we are developing artificial intelligence and uh, machine learnings learns from an, an unbelled data set. So, we have, uh, imagine we have uh, some points on a graph representing three different things, and the machine learning system must uh, recognize itself that there are uh, three different clusters and it has to categorize itself. This is tricky because the number of clusters may not be known in advice, so it has to take the best guess. Sometimes also the cluster is not clear as the one we have uh, in the picture below, so the best guess can be also not that good. And so, when we are uh, talking about unsupervised learning, also another concept is the uh, way of training data. It can be reinforcement learning. So, learning by trial and error, rewarding and punishing the, the system. What this means? This means that machine learning, in the case of uh, video games, uh, um, teaching itself how to play a video games, learn by playing the games millions of times. And the system is rewarded when it makes a good move. When it loses, we give him uh, no or negative reward. Over time, 
over a millions, billions iteration, machine learns, machine learning learns how to maximize uh, rewards without the human explicitly tell, telling them the rules. It can lead to better than human performance when it finds the path that no one thought of doing before. And this is really, really amazing. So, uh, there are many ways that machine learning can learn pattern to classify data, as we said. In this example, we use a line to divide, to divide two clusters. When uh, we can predict future data, saying anything above the line is owned by a cluster, and anything, anything below the line is owned by another cluster. But we can also use a cubic curve, as we saw before. So instead of a straight line, we can have a cubic curve, as you see in the picture below. And that way, the machine learning will predict future point it has not seen before by understanding in which area the point belongs. So, now let's talk about neural networks. Our brain consists of uh, something like 86 billion interconnection of neurons. Each neuron responds to a certain stimuli and passes up to, to another. There may be a bunch of them dedicated to recognize cut, some for any attributes we want. Each having a different weight. The weight is the important that the feature is to the, to the overall contributing of understanding uh, animals, for example. When the neuron fires, if all these neuron fires, your brains tell you you saw a cat. In a, in a neural network, so a model that is loosely modeled like the brain, a uh, neural network are used to calculate the probabilities. For features, they are trained to look at for. So uh, with neural networks, we try to mimic the, the functionalities of a brain. Do you remember when I told you the story of the horse and the, and the, and the dog? That's why. That, that's really that's really the, the so it, now the brain of the of the, that little girls will find some different neurons. So this is the representation of uh, an artificial neuron. So we have uh, three arrows uh, on the left corresponding to the inputs coming to the network. Let's say various point seven points. 0.7, 0.6, 1, 1.4, and uh, these are the weight assigned, assigned to the corresponding input. So this is the input with the weight. Input get multiplied by the respect weight, and they are sum, and their the sum is taken. So if we consider three input, we have x1, x2, x3, and if we consider three weight, it can be w1, w2, and w3. We have then the sum of it, and uh, after we we sum, we are we are usually add a bs, and we also see in the code this to the sum uh, to get the sum. And the bias is just a constant number, let's say one, which is added for scaling purposes. So the new sum will be something like this one. It's not necessary to add bias, but it's a good practice, and, uh, that's it. and it's, that's it good for speeding up the process. After adding the bias, we reach the threshold step. And uh, if the new sum calculated is above the threshold value, the neuron gets excited. So it means it passes the value and it passes out to the output. Otherwise, it doesn't. So exact. It goes there and then it goes on the other side. Now, with this concept, this is the math behind all of this. So we are developer, we are not really caring about that, but also in my in my links I have a good uh, a good book 
where to start from and uh, the book is actually made out of a professor of the Californian University and um, uh, when you get this book you get also access to the uh, full semester recordings so it's a video recording where the professor is teaching the course buses based on that book that's really good if you want to dig deep into the into the math of this the activation function that we saw over there over there is another um, is another part uh, of the process of the neuron and usually there are several uh, activation fun function and usually they are used uh, the most used 90 percent of the time is the uh, relu one or the ten age or the sigmoid the ten age goes from minus one to one the sigmoid goes to from zero to one these are the most used, and there is there is something to say about this, about artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is so complex that it's not uh, uh, it's not an exact science. The way we develop artificial intelligence is by testing. So because of this, we can uh, apply to our neuron one activation function uh, or another. When uh, so that then we can train the model with an activation function, get the result, train the model with another activation function and get the result, as well as, as using different uh, deep neural network uh, patterns, right? By testing the data, uh, by testing the data and getting the result, we will get the, the most important uh, the most important part. So let's, I want to show you something about that. Uh, so let's see, yes, it's over there. So uh, as I told you before, there are a lot of uh, databases out of the data set that we're ready to use for our um, for uh, teaching purposes. One of the most uh, known is the MNIST database. So, uh, the MNIST database is, data, is a database of uh, n written digits, and we have uh, seven, uh, 70,000 labeled examples and uh, uh, 10,000 uh, samples that can be used to get the result. This is another important concept about artificial intelligence. When we try, when we, when we train our model, then if you want to test it, we have to use a, a data set that is never shown before. Because if you use the same data, it's like spoiling, right? It's not good to use the same data that we use to train the, the, the system for then testing it out. Okay, right? So this is another, another important thing. Always divide a training data set from test data set. So and here, how, uh, like, you, like you can see, there are several different classifiers used to create a machine learning model. So uh, what does it mean? We get the data set, we train the model with one of these uh, classifier and also with the post-processing and then we get the result. The best result we can get is the one that then the model, the training model that we want to use. In, uh, in the case of, in the, case of uh, the MNIST database, the SWM one well, is one of, uh, is one of the best here. Uh, okay, let's go back. So activation function, uh, uh, where we are. So, okay. We got the concept of a neuron. Then uh, imagine that we can stack a multilayer neuron, like it happens to the brain. And all uh, stacking up any artificial neuron helps us to create intelligent system. Intelligent systems, why? Because we are talking about deep neural network, and deep neural network simply consists of interconnected uh, in layers of uh, neuron of neurons. There are also some middle layer in between the input and the output, and each layer can learn from the one before. This is important. 
If the liar can usually, uh, are usually uh, a lower dimension so that they can generalize and not overfit input data. Middle liar can learn features for of uh, uh, features, and uh, a simple example it's like first liar it's like uh, lead to lead to understand that is a face part, and then the other liar leads to faces and so far so on. The most two deep neural networks users are the convol uh, con convolu sorry, convolutional neural networks and recurrent neural network. And uh, yes, some uh, some uh, machine learning app types we have regression that is to predict numerical values like price of the house, classification. So if this cat, human, or whatever, clustering. Uh, most similar other example, uh, so for example, uh, the related products of Amazon. And then we have sequence prediction. So if we have a sequence, one, two, three, four, five, we want to predict the next number. So we are very near to start developing our, uh, our application. So to develop our application, the tools so are uh, really important. Visual Studio tools, get go ahead and go to grab it and install. There is also a sample uh, repository on channel nine. There is a very good video talking about uh, Visual Studio tool, how to install and how to use it. WinML, WinML, it's something really important. It was released something like six months ago, I think, I believe, uh, at build and answer that build. And before these two guys, as I told you, the only way to develop artificial intelligence it was just to go out of our comfort zone. Now what we can do is using the Visual Studio tools for AI and also WinMM. With WinMM, what we can do is to develop artificial intelligence in C sharp. Now, nice. and I will show you, and I will show you what what. What uh, what is the difference? We are already talking about the uh, modified National Institute and Standard and Technology database of Android and Digit, and we are going to use it for the for the rest of the course. And this is an important this is an important one. So let's develop our first application. So okay. So, I was talking. I was talking about the MNIST database, and uh, so the MNIST database. This is another link that you will find then later in my in my resource. It's as a, as I told you, is a database of and written digit database, and it consists of uh, uh, seven in total uh, seventy thousand. A image of written, and this image are 28 pixel by 28 pixel. Now, one important thing that we have to do when we have a, when we have a sets of data that is multidimensional, and usually multidimensional data are called tensor. This is another uh, another thing to understand. Is that we need to get this picture and load in a single dimensional array. For doing that, we are doing what is called flattering. So we are going to take, so it's like, as we said, it's 28 pixel by 28 pixel. So we get the first row, 28 pixel, and we pu we'll start putting in, in a row. Then we get the second row and we go and we put it on the side, on the side, by having, if you multiply 28 by 28, it comes out 70, 70, 784 pixel, and this is the our our uh, vector that we are gonna use for for such kind of uh, of stuff. Now, why why I want to use why why I like the the MNIST database. I like the M MNIST database because it's something visual. So when we train when we train the model, we get the result. 
uh, we get the result visually. We understand if the machine learning is, is well trained or not because because the data the data are visual. So if we hand write uh, one, for example, then we ask the machine learning to get it. We can understand if it's good or not. So uh, there is another, another, another very nice uh, resources that I don't see. Let me let me find because it's something that I want really to to show you. So bookmarking tools, view bookmark sidebars. Okay, here we are. The most complex one. So let's see if I can find it very, very fast. Uh, yes, this one. So this is another blog that is in the resources and it's very, very good. So let's say neural networks, where is it? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Here we go. So this is a paper. This uh, this this guy is uh, researching about, and he was uh, the paper was based on the MNIST database. So the, this is this is uh, the result of a study of uh, a semester or so. And one thing that I was telling you about the data is that. Okay, let's see if we can visualize it because it's very nice. So it's getting a bit longer to load it, but it's loading. So why why is good to use visual data when we are uh, starting understanding? Uh, we are starting understanding uh, um, artificial intelligence. This is a, a 3D representation of the MNIST trained model with the, one of the models that we are going to use. And uh, so here you can say any of this point is the point used to train the model. And what, what we can experience over there? This is an eight, but this is in the, the, in the context of, a, of an eight, okay? So this is an eight in the context of a six, right? Why? Because it really seems, it really seems we are not sure if it's an eight or six. And this is where the artificial intelligence maybe can uh, can uh, can file, right? This is a five, but it seems yeah, right? You see, it can be, it can be, and so so. Uh, Let's see. Let uh, now. That said, let's see some uh, some example. So, uh, as I told you, Visual Studio AI tools, Visual Studio AI tools, they have a very good sample repository when you can, where you can find, uh, where you can find uh, a lot of uh, a lot of example uh, for different SDKs. Okay, so, okay, uh, okay, okay, let's do it like this. Uh, now I cannot find the source of my, of my laptop, but you can go online and uh, also in the list of resources I will give you, there is also the uh, link for the sample, uh, uh, oh, here it is, for the sample I master. So this is uh, the MNIST database implementation using uh, uh, actually the CNTK SDK. So, and this is this is Python. So we are already in our comfort zone because we are using our tool, right? But this is Python. So it's a step ahead because we don't have to use other tools. So kudos to the uh, Visual Studio AI tools for the with for the team that developed these tools, but we are still out of our comfort zone. Nevertheless, I want to show you, this is the most important part of the code where they are creating the, where with this code, we are creating the deep neural network for then 
creating the model and then uh, train it. So if we if we run this code over there, so the code as you can see over there, it's uh, okay. We hit the breakpoint. Yeah, we can also use all the features we have in Visual Studio. That's fantastic. So it's creating the model. We are adding some uh, layers to our uh, to our deep neural network. Do you remember the slides where we was talking about the where we was talking about the the things the the, the layers on the deep neural network? This is creating the layers for uh, for uh, for the model, and then the get the data gets downloaded. I have already the locally, so hopefully it's not going to download it. And then exactly. Let's go there, and then uh, uh, okay. Exactly, it's going to train our system. So we are actually training the AI model. I want to show you my task manager, but it gets a bit, uh, how to say, yeah, here it is. Let's get a bit, uh, okay, let's stop this. We already have the result. So, uh, we, have the, we have the result, and the result we can, uh, we can get over there, uh, open, uh, Okay, we can open in, uh, in File Explorer if my laptop is able to do it. And uh, it's a bit slower down. And here we go. This is the model. The CMTK already, uh, this is the last line of the code. Let's see, it's over there. We are running out of time. I want to show you C-sharp samples. Okay, the Onyx model. So that then we can use the Onyx model on our uh, component. So let's say we are going. We was a bit. We are a bit late. So uh, what, something that I want to show you is how to do it with WinML. With WinML, just create um, just create a, a project. Add a dependency to the add a dependency to the. Uh, WinML package, and then, uh, for example, here I'm using the Iris data. This uh, this is another uh, another dataset for classifying uh, for classifying Iris flower based on this on this part. So how how long it is, it's get classified. So and here we go. We can do it on uh, we can do it on uh, C sharp. Just create a pipeline, load the data, the same code that we was looking at uh, the CMTK before. Now we are doing it in C sharp. Uh, we can add our label, we can add our features, and then this is the most important part. We can add our classifier, classifier, and when when we have the classifier, then we can also train the data and uh, predict it. I have also another one sample that I want to show you, and also this repository is publicly avail available. Uh, um, it's also in the link at the in the last slide. It's in my repository. So again, this is another. This is a bit more complex, like example. And this is what I want to show you because this is also uh, using uh, using a uh, uh, regressor. So, uh, so, fun. so, so for, for training the data, testing the data, we can read it and then we can, uh, we can uh, uh, train our model, we can evaluate, evaluate the result and then use, our, uh, then use our model. This is really simple, let's, let's start it. So, but there is something else that I want to show you before the ending. Let's see. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, coffee break.
Okay, right. Okay, training the data and the prediction is this one. So we we got our data trained. Also from WinML, there is a way for uh, exporting it to the Onyx model. And once we have it to the Onyx model, oh sorry, once we have it to the to the Onyx model, that's something for the work. I don't need it now. Once we train it with the we train the Onyx model, just let's just drop it. So I have trained this model with um, CMTK, and this is the MNIST database, just because I didn't have the time to add the sample for the MNIST database on WinML, but I will update also this repository with also this sample. And then uh, what, what we have to do is just uh, drop the ONNX package, uh, ONNX file over there. When you drop over there, it the Visual Studio already creates all the classes you need to use the classifier, and then you are good to go and use it. So, uh, and uh, this is the part, right? As I show you in the code, this is the the model. But keep in mind, this is the model that we developed now. So this is the real difference. We have developed our model, we have created our deep neural network, and now we are going to use it. So let's say um, you can you can look at the code by yourself. So it's loading the model. I can uh, write something over there and then say regularize. And that's it. If you want to see the process, it's really simple. Let's say, let's do it like this, erase, and let's make a seven. Recognize, so recognize. Uh, what I'm doing over there, uh, I'm getting the ink, the stroke from the ink canvas, converting in the way the model input likes the, the input I'm passing to the model and I'm asking to evaluate it. When it's evaluated, I get the I get the the result. In this case it's a bit complicated, so I get an array with the, all the all the guess and I have to understand which is the best guess. I'm just iterating the array and getting the best guess that in this case is, let's say, let's say, let's say, in this case, it's a set, six. Okay, uh, that's, that this time uh, the model wasn't that good in recognizing it, but let's say, let's give another try and let's try, let's see what's happening over there. So, evaluation, blah, 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 and now it's eight. Okay, we have infused artificial intelligence in our application. That's, that's almost, that's almost all we are over there, and um, all these resources will be will be available uh, for you to download. Also, the slide will be available to download, so you can get also all the resources. You can, as you can see, there are a lot of good points to start. One thing that I want to point you out is uh, this one. This is a uh, three hour and a half courses on uh, theory about deep, deep learning. You must see this course. And also, let's see, let's see, and that's it. Uh, some thanks for the people that helped me and get me inspired for uh, this course and to teach myself artificial intelligence because this is something really, really hard at the beginning. I hope this will help you. And so, if we have any questions, this is the moment we can uh, get there. You mean the one with the resources, I think, yes. Okay. 
Absolutely. Thank you all. Thank you.